All right, and welcome into the Betting Pros College Football Podcast. This is the show where we'll take you around the country every single week to ensure you're taking advantage of the college football season from a sports betting perspective. I'm your host, Seth Wilcock, coming at you from the fringe of Penn State country. And today I am joined by our resident college football betting expert here at Betting Pros, soaking up the Texas sun, Scott Bogman. Bogman, how are you doing as week zero of the college football season approaches? I'm I'm not soaking in any sun. I'm being a vampire <laughs> sitting in front of my computer getting ready uh, for this week and super excited that week zero is kicking off here and we actually get some games. Uh, you know, we're no longer talking about it. We're about to be uh, being about it. So I'm really excited to get this season kicked off and to start rolling. I agree. There's just something special about this time of year, man. Uh, At least up here in Pennsylvania, getting a little bit colder right now as far as the weather goes. And all across the country, about 100 100 or so different communities are going to be vibing out to college football. And I I don't know about you down in Texas, but it feels like up here, we go as the team goes. Attitude is all about how your college football team is doing up here in this part of the state, and I'm sure down there as well. I mean, it's Texas. You know, the... uh, (laughs) The high school stadium that they're building uh, down the street from me is probably bigger than some FCS schools, <laughs> right? So it's uh, Texas uh, is king for football, and that's what the community is about. Unfortunately for me, uh, I'm a Longhorns fan, and I live in Aggie country. So Ooh. I live uh, real close to College Station. And uh, the one time I got pulled over here, I happened to be wearing a Longhorns hoodie. Ooh. So I went ahead. I started wearing my black one instead of my <laughs> orange one uh, when I'm driving. But, uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited for football. We're ready here in Texas. And uh, let's get it rolling. Yeah, this is our early picks and line movement show for Week Zero. We'll tell you where the lines are heading and uh, maybe some early leans as well. Hopefully, you can grab some positive value as we approach uh, the games here further in the week. On the show today, we'll be breaking down the Week Zero slate. Florida State, Georgia Tech over in Dublin there. Montana State at New Mexico. SMU at Nevada and Delaware State going down to Hawaii as well. And before we jump in, I do want to remind you, if you want a chance to score a free Amari Cooper signed jersey, courtesy of our friends over at pristineauction.com, all you need to do is head to bettingpros.com slash contest complete the form and either download the betting pros app leave a review on the betting pros podcast or subscribe to our social media channels at betting pros on x and tiktok and at betting pros nfl on instagram the more actions you complete the more entries you will receive we'll be announcing a winner right here on the channel so make sure you're subscribed turn on those notifications so you can be alerted when new episodes drop and to claim your prize all right, Boggs, let's go ahead and start here overseas. Kicking off the 2024 college football season are ACC rivals Florida State and Georgia Tech in the Aer Lingus Classic. Reese, Herbie, Pat, and the boys college game day. They'll be live from Dublin. I'm sure the Guinnesses will be flowing um, for this one over there as well. Florida State currently ranked 10th in the country following their undefeated regular season last year and debatable playoff snub as well. Um, they're favored by 11 and a half here. However, they have lost a ton of talent to the NFL over the offseason. Jared Verse gone, wide receiver Keon Coleman gone, Trey Benson, he's with the Cardinals now, and Jordan Travis in the league as well. They'll take on the Yellow Jackets here, uh, who are plus 350 on the money line, have a lot of offensive experience coming back, led by QB Haynes King. He had 37 total touchdowns last season. And Jamal Haynes, he's a 1,000-yard rusher from last season as well. Boggs, are these lines correct as they stand, and where do you expect them to go here as it, as it approaches here on on the weekend my initial thought when i saw this line was oh man because you know i i remember seeing northwestern upset nebraska in yeah. ireland and i kind of have that burned into my brain but then last year we saw notre dame go and beat the doors off of navy right so the travel can be weird going all the way to ireland mm-hmm. um and i'm a known for this season, Florida State hater. I mean, I talked about how I'm betting on their under for their win total for this season. But when you look at the discrepancy in talent, um, you know, and you look at the replacements that this team has, I still think Florida State wins. I think this line would be much bigger if this game was played in the States, regardless of where it was, in Tallahassee, at Georgia Tech, neutral site, whatever. I think it would be much more of a Florida State line. But this Georgia Tech, as you mentioned, Seth, it, they are an experienced group, right? Uh, Haynes King was great. Uh, Haynes was awesome. They have a lot of returning starters on offense. So I, I, what I, I think my favorite bet here is the over, right? And um, 
the the uh, and I know like Florida State's defense is much better than Georgia Tech's, but we're sure. replacing a lot. You mentioned most of the guys. There were ten players off this team drafted, just drafted. So that's a lot of talent to lose. It's a lot to ask a new group to gel together real quickly. So, you know, I understand this line, and the line is sinking. I think now you can get it, uh, I believe, at FanDuel for maybe ten and a half. Oh, wow. I think everyone is looking at this line, watching it go down and down and down, and I think every time it goes down, we're getting a little more value on the Florida State side. So if, I'm, if I want to bet the line on this and the spread, I'm going to wait. Because I mm-hmm. think what we're seeing from the market is watching this number go down. Uh, but the total, I think I'm taking as soon as possible because I do like the over in this game uh, with both of these offenses. You know, Georgia Tech bringing experience, playing against uh, a new group at Florida State, and Florida State just being supremely more skilled uh, in terms of roster strength. Maybe they don't put it all together initially, mm-hmm. but, you know, one of the first things I heard this offseason was about a Georgia Tech upset. I've had that in my mind. I just don't think they have yeah. the, the horses to do it here. So I'm going to take Florida State, but I really like the over in this game. That total has grown substantially since opening Boggs. Do you do you imagine that will be right around that same uh, 55 and a half number come Saturday, or do you think we do see some movement there again? I think it's going to creep. I think it's going to creep up closer to 57. And okay. these lines are always going to grow in week zero, week one, yeah. because we've had them available since June, right? right? So you're going to see these numbers shift one way or the other a bunch uh, for this week and next week. They'll shift less, significantly less, obviously, uh, moving forward once we get into the season. But yeah, there's been a lot of movement on this one. Next up, we have the battle between Montana State and New Mexico. The Bobcats finished third in the Big Sky. That's an FCS division last season. They're favored by nine points heading down to Albuquerque here. Meanwhile, the Lobos finished tied for last in the Mountain West a year ago. Uh, They've kind of hit the reset button here a little bit, including head coach Bronco Mendenhall uh, is going to be leading this staff moving forward. He has 11 years of head coaching experience over at BYU and six in Virginia as well. Boggs, where do you see this line going? And do you have an early lead here? Uh, Obviously, Obviously, Montana State is going to be the heavy favorite here over under sitting right around 53 and a half right now. Yeah, it's not uh, every day you see an FCS team favored against <laughs> right? an FBS team. But Montana State ranks fourth in the FCS preseason polls. Uh, they averaged the second most points in the FCS last season. They were number one in yards per play. So this is a very good offense, uh, a well-oiled machine here going up against a team that, yes, is a division higher, but is at the bottom of the barrel of this division. You know, Bronco Mendenhall is a good coach. He's, uh, you know, had some turnarounds. He's experienced lifting a roster that is less than, right? So I do like that, but I just have no faith in New Mexico in this game at all. I'm leaning towards Montana State. That is the opposite, right? This one opened up real low at Mm -hmm. minus four and a half and it has since expanded to eight eight and a half nine this is a line that if i want to take montana state get a little juice on this game to make it more interesting i'm going to do it as soon as possible because i think that line is going to open up Okay. All right. And let's keep it moving here, Boggs. But first, I want to remind everyone listening about the Betting Pros Pick Tracker. Want to track all your wagers in one place? Check out the Betting Pros Pick Tracker. It syncs up with your sportsbook to tally which pick hit, which it syncs up with your sportsbook to tally which picks hit and which picks miss. Plus, it gives you a live look at what the betting public is doing so you can track in real time to determine which plays to make and which plays to fade. Track your picks today with the Betting Pros Pick Tracker at bettingpros.com slash pick dash tracking or on the betting pro sports betting app the primetime matchup of the week includes smu at nevada the mustangs beat tulane to win the aac conference championship last season now they're making this jump to the acc they're favored by 27 and a half against nevada more of kind of this mountain west fodder here two and ten last year overall scored just 19 offensive touchdowns on the season as a whole in 2023 head coach jeff choate now takes the reins here 28 and 2020 28 and 22 as the head coach at montana state spent some time down with your texas longhorns recently as the co-defensive coordinator and some position coaches there how do you feel about him and his squad coming in here do you think uh nevada has any chance to potentially at least uh break up what what could be a, a heavily dominated smu game 
Oh, man. I hate this game. I, I like <laughs> this game much better at what it opened at, but I mean, it opened too low. It opened at 21 and a half, right? And uh, we saw the bets flood in on the SMU side. It has since expanded six points. I think we're starting to lose um, value on SMU. Uh, you know, our system shows it is less than that. Our system is on the under. I really don't like this game because it looks like a SMU demolition, right? I, right. Jeff Choate has worked a miracle before. He turned around Montana State, who we just talked about, uh, but that took him four seasons at the FCS level. So sure. I don't think you're going to go in game one and face an SMU team that is realistically aiming for the tournament. This is a top 10 team on offense for sure. I would say they're probably top 20 or 30 on defense as well. They return 10 of their top 11 tacklers from last season. Uh, they're going to put a lot of pressure on Nevada. I think they're going to get out early. I think they're going to destroy this Nevada offensive line. I mean, it's just so much experience coming back on defense for SMU. And, um, I mean, Elijah Roberts had 10 sacks last season. I think he's going to be eating Nevada's lunch. Uh, Preston Stone is a very well-regarded quarterback for uh, SMU. Jalen Knighton was all-conference. So was their tight end, RJ Maryland. The wide receiver room is ex incredibly talented. Like I said, this yeah. is a top-10 offense going against a rebuilding defense. And you're going to run all those plays that you practice all offseason. If you're SMU, you know, these are the plays that you've been running the entire offseason. You're crisp at them. And I bet you playing against your defense in practice is much harder than playing against Nevada's defense in the game. So I just I don't see how uh, Nevada stands a chance in this game. Uh, it would have to be, you know, if they get out early and SMU kind of pulls the reins back and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I'm kind of staying away from this game. But if you do want to bet it, I would say get it as soon as possible because this line is just going to keep opening opening up. I expect it to be closer to 30 by the time we mm -hmm. get to kickoff. And when we have a spread this big, Boggs, are you really relying on uh, pass production returning here? Is that really the metric you're kind of looking at? Because obviously not a ton of data to go off here, in, especially in week zero. Um, so is it really those returning players and, and that production coming back that you're really leaning on here in your projections and analysis? It's not just that, but it's really the, the difference in roster strength. I okay. mean, you know, the talents on the field. Like, of course, you know, coaches are going to make a difference, which... Uh, you know, uh, interesting enough in that FSU game we're playing or we we're talking about Mike Norvell may may not let his foot up off the gas. Right. right they they right. got they got hosed out of a playoff spot last year. So it might be no mercy for anyone this year. I don't know that SMU is is a no mercy team. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll see. But I don't expect this game to be very fun for Nevada either way, even at home. I think it's going to be a tough start uh, for the Jeff Chode era here. All right, let's 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 wrap up the Week 0 slate here at the island of Honolulu, Delaware State. They're going to be traveling to Hawaii to face those Rainbow Warriors. Biggest spread on the weekend here. Hawaii favored by a whopping 38 points entering the third year of the Timmy Chang era. This is a former Hawaii quarterback who has taken his alma mater from three wins in his first season with them to five last season, but still kind of faces a little bit of an uphill climb in the Mountain West here. Meanwhile, Delaware State, they're going to be traveling 10 hours at least, coming off a 1-10 record in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference in the FCS. This is a huge freaking spread. Absolutely ginormous. There's even no money line available at most books on this game. Boggs, do you see uh, this playing out, that the spread could potentially even grow more as the game approaches? And do you have an early lead here as well in the great state of Hawaii? Uh, how can you not take Hawaii in this game? I mean, Delaware State, you know, this is just a tough draw. Um, I mean, great for the players. They get to go to Hawaii, right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. not bad, but... You know, look, Hawaii, in the grand scheme of the FBS, is not a good team, right? They're, uh, to, uh, I think they're in the 120s, probably, on right. both offense and defense. But five-win team last season, they have a decent amount returning. I believe, um, according to my buddy Nick at CFP Winning Edge, they're seventh in returning oh. production at 78.2% of their returning production uh, comes back. And... What that is is continuity, and mm -hmm. what you want for week one is continuity. Well, it's not just continuity and uh, being at home, right? You have, you're playing 
Delaware State, which is a bad FCS team. So the sure. the, the difference level is already enormous here. Uh, again, you know, practicing against your starters is probably harder than playing against the Delaware State starters. Um, this is a game you use to springboard your team's confidence as well. I, I don't know how we couldn't go Hawaii in the over on this game if we're betting on it. You know, only four games, not mm -hmm. a lot to pick through. Yeah. Um, I'll get more into player props on Friday and, uh, you know, a couple of other um, different plays. But this game, I just think this is Hawaii rolling. You think that 38-point spread continues to grow here as the week uh, rounds out here as well, Boggs? I, I think I don't know if it gets much higher than <laughs> yeah. that. That's pretty. It's pretty yeah. tough to get Hawaii uh, more points in this game. But I think if the bets come in, you know, I, there's no way I'm betting on Delaware State. I'll just say okay. that. Okay. So okay. Uh, I, you know, all I have to say about Hawaii is get your stuff together because no tailgating th this season down in Honolulu for whatever reason until the final game, uh, home game on their schedule. So. Don't really know what's going on down there, but we got to get the tailgaters in, got to get involved in the game early. So hopefully they can figure that out here um, as the, the season progresses here. But but all right, that'll do it for us here on the Betting Pros College Football Podcast today. We'll be back later in the week with Terrell Furman uh, with our picks and prediction show. Boggs, as he alluded to, will be back on Friday with his best bets and player props as well. Until then, make sure you like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the Betting Pros YouTube channel and our podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Plus, download the Betting Pros app and sync your sports books today. For Scott Bogman, I'm Seth Wilcock. Take care, y'all. Thank you.